thinking about this embankment here. And my thought here is uh, where it's just the shake grass. Kind of have that be kind of weeds and brambly mess and then work its way up. Eventually that's going to be trees. I don't have any made yet, but that's going to be trees there, kind of in front of the other trees, all with the idea of hiding that entrance to staging back there and kind of breaking up the scene from this module here of the box of goodies sitting there in Manchester. So kind of a scene break. But uh, yeah, we'll, we'll come and we'll start working that embankment. Welcome back to more experimenting. So what this is, this is a coconut basket liner. And I grabbed a little chunk of it and I tore it kind of in half. The outside of it has this sort of, it's flat and pressed and there's some kind of adhesive on it. So if you actually tear that apart, you can then tease the interior of it. And what I'm going for here is like a uh, brambly woods line um, for the hill near the fuel dealer in Manchester. So what I'm going to do, I've got that one. Uh, this is what it looks like on the outside. This is what it looks like sort of before you tease it. So I need to kind of pull at it. I'll get these bigger chunks of bark and that kind of stuff like right there. I'll pull it out and just get rid of that. That's out of scale for HO. But I think this stuff will work as kind of overgrown weeds and brambles and all kinds of you know stuff where you get ticks and chiggers. That's what we're going for here. Uh, same thing here. Uh, so we'll do that one. And then I've also got this, I think this is rubberized horsehair. Uh, I've got a whole, they come in these square chunks like this. We had an air purifier thing that uh, was supposed to hook into the HVAC that we never hooked in. I don't know that it ever even worked. We've gotten rid of it, but I, before we threw it all out, I, I grabbed a few of these squares of this stuff. It looked like something that you might be able to mess with. So doing the same thing there, again, pulling a big chunk of it. The outside of it's got this, you know, flat, more flat surface. Rip it open and then tease the inside. And again, you know, I've just started playing with this one, but got a couple of these pieces here to, to mess with and, and kind of pull apart and we'll, 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 we'll paint them, then put some glue on and some different colors of foam and not foam, um, fine ground cover stuff, leaves and those kinds of textures and stuff. Add that to it and, and see what it looks like. So we'll come back. So this is what I came up with. This is the coconut coir. So that's the two coconut coir pieces I was messing with. And these are the ones that was that rubberized horsehair. And I think I like the way these, these turned out. I should be able to use them on embankments and underneath trees, in the woods, etc. So what I did to paint them was I just used Actually, let me go get the paints, I'll show you. Um, just a flat brown, gave everything a really good coat. Um, you know, covered up all the blue on this and the really light tan on the other with that flat brown. Then I came back and yeah, sort of selectively sprayed, not an even coat, but intentionally um, all over the place. Uh, you know, stripes and blotchies and whatever, kind of like a camouflage effect with this uh, dark uh, hunter green. It says satin. I can't, it doesn't look shiny to me. So this was fine. So this hunter green. And that was the most, the vast majority of the paint that went on there. Then I did some uh, ground foams using spray adhesive. This stuff right here. And a whole variety of foams. Uh, one of them I like, the really light stuff, is this uh, JTT scenery. It's called Martian Green. Um, but anyway, it's a really nice light green kind of highlight color and you can see clumps of it up in there and sort of scattered around Other than that, I used uh, three different kinds of super leaf from scenic express um, There's a medium green and olive green and one more I'm trying to remember what it was spring green 
So I used sort of three different ones there. And I also used the same kind of ground cover I put right on the ground itself in the woods area. Because if you look in the woods, you see dead leaves, not grass. It's dead leaves. So this is just Scenic Express Super Leaf leaf litter. Uh, I put that a whole bunch of that in there too, which you can see. And then just because I'm mixing in all kinds of textures and varieties, the last thing I used, bringing it over to the camera here, this is a uh, hecky leaf flock, and it's, it's kind of a multicolored, finer than the other ones. Um, so there's the, the item number there, 1690. I can't read German, so I have no idea what any of that says. But I like that product. So I just kind of mix those all together, um, you know, layers of spray adhesive, uh, various textures, more spray adhesive, more various textures, a little bit of hairspray, just cheap hairspray to hold everything on. And then last, I came back, any of this wispy stuff you see sticking up, some sort of like that and right in there, those things weren't, nothing was sticking to it. So you see this lighter green there? That's these two, and these are florist sprays. There's a basil color, which is kind of a light green, and then this sprout is, I think what you saw right there. But they're just nice for little highlights and variations and I just kind of held it and sprayed the mist over the top. Instead of down on it, I spread it, sprayed it across, hoping that I was just picking up these things sticking up. And I think that worked out pretty well to give, you know, the branches that are kind of upright and the vines and stuff, just some, some green tones where I couldn't get uh, anything to stick to it. So that's how I made these. Uh, and now I think I'm gonna let these dry overnight and uh, and get them on that hill in the embankment uh, tomorrow. Okay, just uh, laying some pieces out here. And I initially had kind of covered that whole area, but I think the way that woods generally look is you'd see this kind of stuff, and then that would kind of give way as the tree canopy takes over. So I'm gonna leave this um, with just some smaller trees before the big ones go in, kind of like what we did over there. <clears throat> and just have this on the edge and I'm starting to kind of play with blending this in it's not really blended yet everything's just laying it's going down the back of the hill here too panning slower than that sorry about the speed there and I might come in and cut some of these stray pieces that are you know 10 15 scale feet off the ground that's not very viney and then this side I'd work down <clears throat> into a more of an open field. So the trees will be in that sort of brownish area. Also started with some smaller bits and where this back here was sort of like this, just very plain or like that. Started cutting some smaller pieces and kind of working it onto that embankment. And I think that looks, and again, all of that's just sitting there. None of it's glued or pressed down very far. It's all just laying in there on the edge of the embankment, but I, I think I like how that looks. So I'm probably gonna start gluing that down to kind of work that embankment in. I think that looks better than just, you know, I might leave this exposed or add a little bit more grass to that, leave this more open. Um, but this part where it's working up into a deep woods line, probably just leave like that. So. I'm experimenting, messing around, but I'm liking the way it's looking. I might start gluing some stuff in here. I had to make some more trees. So this is what's left of uh, the first box of super tree uh, armatures that I had. <clears throat> the way I do it uh, is, is not probably terribly dissimilar from the way others do it. I uh, the first thing you got to do is pull there's little leaves in there and y'all can watch other videos about how to do super trees but um, you pull the little leaves off I give it a good coat of uh, gray primer spray paint uh, I think trees in the wild in nature are generally more tan uh, you know more sort of tan and uh, gray than they are brown so that's what I do and then the same three colors of, uh, of super leaves, I just use spray adhesive. Um, just, I usually generally use one color per tree, but I use the three different colors on trees. So when I put it all together, I have trees of three different shades. Uh, once I've done that, 
I sprinkle or I spray on some hairspray. And if you look, especially some of these taller ones here, the way they're catching some highlights, that's not by accident. I, after I've put the leaves on, I come in and spray a fine mist of yellow uh, florist spray paint uh, over the top. And I try to hit the highlights and it really makes it kind of pop in the light as if it's in the sunlight. Uh, versus just be kind of a drab color. You can see where I did it on sort of this side, but not that side, kind of all up along in there. So that's how I do it. Um, should be enough, hopefully, as I pan slowly to fill in this area up here. That's what it's for. So as those are drying, I'm going to come back, add a few more weeds and details along the track here. Uh, I've started gluing. Uh, that other embankment along this back track. I wanted to get that done first, too. These are all just random pieces holding stuff down. Um, use what you got, right? So wanted to get that back area done, get whatever details I want to do back there, uh, and then put these trees in. But I went ahead and made the trees tonight. Uh, I'm looking forward to uh, getting this area of the layout kind of kind of wrapped up. I realize in this segment, some of y'all might be curious exactly what paint I'm using to do that highlight. And it's just this. Um, I think I got this at Michael's or some, somewhere like that. It's Flora Spray. Uh, and this is just, uh, just yellow. So I kind of stand pretty far back and spray a mist onto the top of the tree and just sort of let it settle on the highlights, which is exactly what light would do, uh, you know, sunlight. So just wanted to kind of show that design master yellow. All right, I've got that embankment glued down and I just need to come in and do a little bit of grass and stuff right along the bottom of it, you know, weeds and things there just to kind of blend it in a little bit. But I went through, uh, I've got this only 50 foot car I have and I think the Jeeps are like 53 feet, 54 feet, something like that, probably the biggest locomotives I have. So this is a nice little test for clearance. So I just was running this with my finger through here and any place where the corner of that got near or clipped any of the scenery, I just trimmed it with some sharp scissors and vacuumed it out with a shop vac. So I think that's a little tight, but it's clear. It's not touching. I don't see anything moving. And certainly the car doesn't appear to be getting hung up on anything. So I think we're good. So I'm gonna move on. Just wanted to show, uh, show the clearance there. All right. Last, uh, last time looking back here at the embankment and just calling out that I put in a little bit of detail there, especially around the bottom of some of those mats that I made that had kind of a, like a straight edge to it, just to kind of cover that up and blend things. Uh, got a little bit of uh, uh, tufts in there and some of the, uh, the weeds from um, Martin Welberg. Kind of worked them in all along the bottom of that, kind of all along there. And I think uh, there's a little bit of a static grass mat there with some wet glue. And I uh, just stuck in here for now to see what it looks like. That's a little piece of hecky wild grass. So that's what it looks like. And that, that static grass looks very, very light, but a lot of that is the fact that there's wet white glue that hasn't dried clear yet, that I think will, it'll blend in better. So I think I'm, I'm happy with that. I can always reach around these trees if I have to. But I think I'm going to go ahead. Uh, I also added just a little bit of stuff along in here that wasn't there before. But I'm going to go ahead now that I've done that stuff, and most of this isn't going to be too visible, I'm going to go ahead and start planting some trees up there and uh, see how it looks. Every video I've ever seen of somebody making super trees and using them to fill in an area, they end up short. And you can now add my video to that list. I think I need about three or four more uh, to fill in this area here. Uh, but overall, I like the way that that, uh, you can kind of see through it like a, like a, like you would be able to on a little bit of a woods line, but it does do a nice job of kind of completing the scene here. Um, still need to do some more at the bottom of the, uh, the brush there coming towards the camera from right to left. Um, but it's going to be the subject of a, of a future video. So uh, for now, since I don't have any more good tree material to work with, I'm going to stop there. I may add a couple of bushes in here and there. 
and uh, let's run some trains.